Right, the 65s in Hurling. Uh, there's a school of thought out there that it's probably a bit too much of a punishment. Uh, Michael Verney with me here, as pretty much always. We're going to look at an article done by Martin Brehany last week. So I'm just going to read out the trust of what he said in the Irish Indo, and then we'll talk on the back of it, uh, Michael. So basically, what he said, Jason Ford pointed five 65s for Tipperary in their Hurling Division 1A two-point win over Watford on Sunday. So that's a couple of weeks ago now. He would probably have nailed another five chances if they rose. Point and freeze, and that's what 65s are, from that range is a routine exercise for snipers like Ford. It raises the question of whether awarding a 65 metre free against a team who knocks the ball over their own end line is appropriate. In a tiny minority of cases, are they deliberately given away, yet the penalty is the same as for a nasty foul. They mostly arise from a deflection or mishandling, scarcely occurrences that merit a relatively easy free to uh, to the opposition. Much has changed with the slitter, the hurley and the striking technique since 70 yards was set as, as the range in 1950. It was 50 yards up to then, but the advances have not been taken into account. There's a good case for changing the 65 to 85s in the hurling and 45s to 55 in football, where the range is also too short. Right, so that's the, the thrust of the argument being made by... Um, by your co-worker Martin Brehney. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, no, I just, I, I tend to agree, to be honest with you. 65 is so easily scored now. I'd love to see the percentages of 65 scored. Like, they're definitely up in the high 90s, I'd say, particularly amongst your good free takers. Um, and, like, you you'd nearly, like, those lads would nearly blow a ball over from 65 yards now at the moment. Whereas if you were to move it back, we'll say, to the to the far, far 65, you're looking at 85 metres um, I just think I don't think it would be a little bit more. I just don't think like if if I'm cornerback and I go for a ball and I'm under pressure and the ball goes out over the end line and it's it's basically a point. I think it's a very very harsh punishment. Um, or either that for a goalkeeper maybe saving a goal and the ball dribbling out the side and it goes out over the sideline or you know a deflection or a great a great hook or a great flick or something like that. I just don't think the pun. I, there's not a crime. I mentioned the word crime there. There's no crime and I just think you're being punished. For I think you've been punished very, very severely. Given how proficient the top free takers are now, for a little small thing like that, be it a flick or a miscontrol, to be punished so severely, I think is very, very harsh. I just think we should increase the level of difficulty for the taker. I don't know. I think anything that slows down the rate of scoring probably isn't a great thing. <clears throat> also, Why does if it goes slow down the rate of scoring. Sorry. Why is it going to slow down the rate of scoring? Well, because if they become more difficult, less are going to be converted. Yeah, a couple, a couple less. But should it should be like there should be a difficulty to it. There's no difficulty to it now, really, for those really top players, especially given how light the ball is. They could like Jason, Jason Ford could pop, 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 could probably pop line balls over from the 65 yard line, let alone freeze. I just think it's too easy. Um, I think it's just too easy for those top players, even at club level, even at junior level, at club level. You have lads you know, putting over 65s at will now. It's not like before when you had a big heavy ball and, you know, Shawnee McMahon, it was a big feat to score four 65s or four long-range threes in the 95 All-Ireland. It's not It's not a big deal now. It's routine practice for them. Yeah, but at the same time, I, I like the idea that um, because they're kind of easy enough to score, I as a defender, if I'm knocking the ball out towards over over the line and I'm going to give away a 65, there's such a huge incentive to try and keep it in. And the more you keep the ball in, the more the ball stays in that attacking part of the field. Um, whereas if a 65 or an 85 is awarded, you're now looking at a situation whereby teams are going to set up very, very defensively. They'll get a huge amount of lads behind the ball and that... If let's say a ball drops in short or something like that, and that does happen now and again, especially from that sort of distance, and if, if it's out at the sideline also, you're going to end up with these shamozzles. And I don't know, I just I'd rather the the defender always think I need to keep this ball in, and also you're sort of discouraging an attacker from going for a goal if they know that rather than getting a 65, they're going to get an 85. So I I just think the 65 is fine as it is. It's not broken. Why fix it? I don't think the percentage um, scoring rate would go down that much if it was made to an 85, particularly at county level. So what's the point? And I just think what I think it would uh, increase the level, the chances of like maybe a ball dropping in around the square, maybe a miss hit. I think it just increases the difficulty 
on the player, reduces the punishment or crime, shall we say, increases the, the amount of chances of balls being in around the square and other kind of things happening throughout a game. It just, I just think it, it keeps that, how should we say, um, it just kind of keeps that, there's a bit more kind of uh, another unknown maybe coming into the game. I don't think at county level, particularly 65, anywhere in around the middle area, if it's moved to 85, I don't think you'd see the percentage rate dropping that much. I just think, um, particularly at club level, uh, it would just make it a bit more interesting, but honestly, I just think it's too easy for the taker now. If I was going to give a little bit of ground on this, rather than going back to an 85, what I'd say is maker taker. So even if I'm a wing back and I hit a long ball in and the goalkeeper miscontrols it out wide when he's trying to take it down to himself, um, I would say maker taker. I think that would add that little, like, I mean, the problem that Martin is pointing out and that you're doubling down on is that it's like 90% they're going over, maybe even more. In that situation, if everyone was now a potential free taker or a 65 taker, that would add a real element of the unknown. Well, I love that idea because if I put in a ball, if somehow I get far enough up the field from cornerback to put in a ball and it manages to go for a 65. I think you should love the, you should embrace the opportunity to get a chance to score. I think uh, as a byproduct of that, it increases the skill levels all over the pitch because it's not just one free taker. You could have a situation where 20 minutes before training, you have everybody practicing frees uh, and not your lowly corner back poking the ball back out to everybody. He could be out there or your wing back could be out there hitting frees as well. So I think any, but anything that in you know increases the skill levels all over the pitch and makes the game a better spectacle because people are more skillful and able to do basically more skills in the game, I think that has to be a plus. One thing, actually, I spoke to Alan Kelly, the referee from Galway, before. It was just around that time that 65 competitions were coming in if games went past extra time. And he was saying to me, and everyone knows it now, that you appointed five 65 takers for that shootout competition. And once they, let's say it was sudden death, you go back to the same five again. I, th- I thought that was just so boring because because it's still going to be probably exciting. But like the beauty of World Cups is like you see goalkeepers taking taking penalties on goalkeepers, guys you wouldn't ordinarily see taking opportunities. They're thrown up, and I know there's a lot at stake, and people think, "Ah, oh, you want to have the right lads taking the shots or whatever." But again, it comes back to this element of the unknown. Yeah, no, I'm all for unpredictability. I think that's brilliant. And I think the, the the fact that moving it back, I just think, increases the chance of it being unpredictable as well. A maker-taker is kind of a rule would introduce that as well. You just don't know. Like, I remember, um, I think two of the, in the first 65 competition, I think it was between Wexford and Kilkenny in the Walsh Cup. And Lee Chin, who was brilliant on freeze last year, completely duffed a free. He dropped the chart Left by the about line. 10 yards or something. Yeah. Yeah, and Lester Ryan, who scored a penalty to win a county final for Clara, and who's a brilliant striker of ball, completely fluffed his as well. And it just introduces that kind of unpredictability, unpredictability which I think, um, I think that should always be encouraging games. You, I, I get what you're saying about keeping the ball in play. I 100%. Like, it's not as if I'm going to flick a ball out over the end line and just think, oh, he's not going to score it. Chances are he probably will score, still score. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying... He, you bring it back to the far 45 or it's a puck out for the other team or anything like that and just saying just increase the difficulty a small bit the only problem with the maker taker thing is in basketball they have that situation and opposing teams would have always fouled Shaquille O'Neal you know the huge that huge um, power forward that used to play for a number of different teams the Lakers and uh, and Miami was it Miami Heat to Lakers yeah, and a couple more well, I think and <clears throat> so you don't want that situation whereby teams are sort of systematically fouling someone that they know is weak at freeze so that would be my only concern um but i i do like the maker taker but you probably have to refine it somewhat can we jump on to gaelic football actually because martin is also can we, can we jump back for one can we jump back for one second say the weakest of the, the weakest perceived uh skill wise tip forward would be bonner matter bonner matter actually hits freeze for for lura dura so if if teams thought that they could foul him and get away with it, I think even if, if he missed a couple in a match, I think he'd be like, oh, I have to go and practice these frees. No more than if I was a forward and i like, not great at frees, shall we say. People started fouling me. I'd be like, I'm definitely going to prove these wrong. You've got to turn a weakness into a positive. Back to football, sorry. No, well, actually, one final point. Uh, one day I had a cheek to take a free for Kula. We were playing a, a pre-season challenge match. And the rain was coming in sideways. My hands were so cold, I could barely hold the hurley. But we won a free, and it was on the 21. 
and uh, the rain coming in sideways, I had the cheek to try and take because nobody wanted to. Sure, I barely cleared the 21. And I'd imagine you'd have those sort of situations from the 21, barely cleared the crossbar. Desperate. Uh, uh, just on that, I remember playing full back one day for the school. It was an under 16 practice match uh, for St. Brendan's down in Bar. And whatever it was, I don't know who was playing in goals, but they, their puck outs weren't great. So they dropped me back to take a puck out. And my excuse was that I'd been up watching wrestling all the previous night. Previous night. It was on a Monday, Monday afternoon, and I threw up the ball and missed it. Um, so, like, yeah. But, like, these are things that, possibly these are things, the teething problems that might happen at the start. And then teams will be like, okay, these players need to get better at X, Y, and Z. Right, moving to football. The idea of moving it from a 45 back to a 55, I have to say, if you're just asking me, for a reflex answer on that, I'd say no, because it's not like every 45 is scored anyway. And even the last few years, what's coming to mind is in preseason games, you know, when the weather is heavier, the ball is heavier, the ground is um, is obviously a bit soggier. It's very difficult to score a 45 at all. And I can remember a few situations of Dean Rock actually doing little short one twos from 45s because the distance probably wasn't on. Now there's goalkeepers that are knocking it over from all distance. Rory Began comes to mind, Niall Morgan comes to mind. Um, where do you fall on this one? I'm not so sure about the football one. I think hurling has changed massively in the last, you know, ten years with regards to um the physical makeup of players and their ability to, you know, be more technically proficient and be able to strike a lot further and strike a lot crisper, strike a lot more accurate. Uh, it has changed in football, but I still think like when someone sets up to a forty five in Gaelic football and it's outside of the two goalposts. You don't like you're not you're not that confident. So like um, I don't necessarily think that football needs a change. I would definitely be all for change in hurling because I just think um, I just think a sixty five is like a, it's a score. I have sixty like if I was a journalist now at a match a t- tip match, I have Jason Ford nearly marked down for the sixty five already. Do you know what I mean? You're just presuming the football, definitely not. You still have that unpredictability. So I, I d- wouldn't necessarily see the need for a change in football. What what are your thoughts on make or taker in football? Or even back in the olden days like I remember growing up that if you won the free yourself you could take it out of your hands. But maybe I had this wrong or or, or sort of a an illusion over time uh, remembering it differently. But that if you won a free and let someone else take it, that they had to take it from the ground. I'm pretty sure that that's the way it was. I'm not sure of that. Or was it just like nearly everything was taken from the ground anyway? I'm not I'm not 100% sure of that, actually, to be honest. I with. actually had a cheek for our... Um, when we were going on the run to the county minor final in 2000 down in Tipperary, that... Uh, I, st- I decided I'd take the freeze heading into the county final. Not only did I, having never taken them before, not only that, I decided I'd take them off the ground. And I wasn't exactly the most powerful, bi- powerfully built young lad. I took two at the start. One of them barely got up to the height of the crossbar and dribbled off wide. So obviously free taking in either code isn't my thing. But what would, you, what would you feel about that idea that you can take it from your hands if you win it, but it has to be from the ground if someone else takes it? Maybe, maybe it won't even adjust things that, mu- that much. It won't make things that much different, will it? What were we talking? Were you doing the Charlie Redmond eight steps back, two steps to the left? Or what was the... Yeah. I'd say... I actually would have loved to seen it because I'd say you had the socks pulled up to your knees. I'd say you had white boots. This is even before it even came in. And I'd say no one knew and the size of your ego. I'd say it was everything was so exaggerated. It was literally Charlie Redmond mid-90s job, I'd say. It was actually none of that. Uh, none of that. I had no routine. That was part of the problem. I just stepped up and put a boot through it. And then afterwards, we, we won the county title. And in the speech afterwards, I thanked the wrong club for uh, for the match and thanked the wrong club for hosting the game. So I mixed them up. I thanked Borland for the game and Mulnahone for the for the pitch. So that's the sort of ape you're dealing with there. <laughs> just on, on the football, what you said there. So you're saying that um, if I make it, and I don't take it, the other person has to take it off the ground. Yeah. Tell you what now, yeah, well, like, uh, if you're looking at the way football has changed as well, like, you know, with a lot of, like, uh, you know, running half forward, shall we say, athletic half forwards, um, you're making them so that they're a lot of time, the Stephen O'Brien's, these type of lads, they're a lot of time, they're the lads that win the freeze, the lads that maybe break the line and that kind of thing. So it would be very interesting to see them if they had to take the freeze. And then, like, just say Stephen O'Brien is, is fouled down the, you know, down the left wing. And, I don't know, Stephen O'Brien could take it out of his hands from 
20 yards or Sean O'Shea has to kick it off the ground, which he's maybe not, doesn't do it as much from open play, or usually he would take a 45 from the ground. So it'd be interesting to see, like, what would the, the trade-off be there for Sean O'Shea to hit a free and how was cut in a different style or for the man that may, makes it to take it. And that, I think it would be interesting. I think that's the sort of thing maybe that should be trialled throughout the league, maybe. That that type of a thing. I always think it's, um, you have your free takers, but I always think it's, the more ways you can bring more people into the game, the better to me. Yeah, I think Sean O'Shea is the sort of player that will, he's going to break hearts for the next 10 to 12 years from all angles with frees. Late on the game, I can just picture him breaking Cork hearts, Dublin hearts, whatever hearts. But, um, the way it's gone with the uh, the mark, the attacking mark, you have to take it yourself. So that's coming kind of into the game anyway. So why not for freeze? The only situation where you don't take your mark yourself is if you get injured and then the person who's closest to you, they have to go and take the, the freeze. So that's that's the only adjustment there that I'd but, Like, but, it's going that way anyway. Couldn't you definitely see that, that one? If it came to a really, really tight pressure situation, and just say, just say you were play, you somehow managed to play full forward, or came on for cool in a senior championship match, and somehow lorded into that big ignorant fool, and he catches a ball, and then you're like, you're like, you're like that, and Con comes over and kicks the free. It's funny actually now that you mentioned Con. A couple of years ago, obviously he's the man who can do no wrong in a, in a lot of senses in a lot of people's eyes. A couple of years ago, I think it was 2018 quarter final, he missed a free from the 14 out of his hands. Jesus, yeah. I, I, I've seen Seamus Callan miss a free from the 21-yard line straight in front of the goals as well. Was it that can, it can happen. Uh, it happened in the league. It also happened for LIT and if it's given semi-final as well, yeah. Now, these are the boys who can normally do no wrong. So, yeah, again, it just adds unknowns to games, which uh, I think is no harm. Uh, for once, we agree mm -hmm. on something. Yeah, well, 